Okay, so we are live. <laughs> All right, so I am Erin Chung and I help real estate agents get more leads, sales, and referrals online. And I am here today with Karen Carr. And Karen Carr is a real estate agent in Savannah, Georgia. And I wanted to bring her on today so that she can talk about how she did it. So basically getting leads from YouTube. So Karen, welcome so welcome to the uh, to the broadcast today. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> so I've actually been following Karen for a while. And the reason why I found her is because she does a lot of videos. And I was just doing some research one day and I found her. And so I was so excited when she said that she would join me on a call to talk about how she gets leads from YouTube. And what I want to talk about today, especially the reason why Karen is in a kind of a, a unique position, and it's really, really encouraging is because she is an Air Force wife. And so she has moved like four times in four different places and been transplanted every single time. And so the last time when she moved to Savannah, and I think you started in Atlanta when you started doing YouTube. Is that right, Karen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So when she started doing YouTube, that's when she realized that she started seeing leads come in. So this is going to be really, really great for a new agent, or even if you're a, a real estate agent that is entering a new market, this is going to be solid gold for anyone in that position today. So I'm so, so excited. And Karen, what I want to talk about first is let's talk a little bit about like some of the numbers that you're seeing with YouTube and generating leads via YouTube. Okay, great. So I didn't really know what my own numbers were until last week. I was talking with another agent and he asked me that question and I thought, you know, I got to sit down and look at it. And it's kind of boggling my mind. It, it's at least 75% of my business is now coming directly from YouTube. And I didn't realize that till I looked at the numbers. So I actually have a little thing in front of me. I have uh, six in contract, five of them found me on YouTube. Um, two of the four listings I have found me on YouTube. I have 13 active buyers. One of them is a referral from another agent. 12 of them found me on YouTube. Unreal. Unreal. Yeah. Um, that is amazing. I did see um, Angela said that she was unable to see the video. Can you guys just let us know if you can see the video in the Facebook Live? Can you just tell us in the comments below? Okay, perfect. Awesome. Okay. So, um, the next question that I wanted to ask you is like, how did you even start using video? What was the story behind this? Well, I had been blogging and I was having some real success with blogging where people would say, hey, I'm thinking about buying a house and I found you online. You wrote this great article, blah, blah, blah. And I knew that if I embedded a YouTube video in the blog, it would perform better because Google loves Google and Google owns YouTube. So yeah. I started pulling other people's YouTube videos and embedding them on my blog post. Like I would just find something maybe that the Chamber of Commerce did, not another real estate agent because I don't want to drive traffic to their YouTube channel, but something that was about my area that I could put on my blog post. And then after a while of doing that, I thought, well, gosh, I should just make my own video. Like how hard can it be? So I started doing that. And then we decided to move to Savannah and not three days after arriving here in town, my phone rang and this man said, hey, you don't know me, but I feel like I know you. I've been watching all of your videos. We're going to sell our house in New York. We want to move to Georgia. Will you help me? And it was literally like that aha moment of, ah, oh, where, you know, the, the clouds parted and the angels began to sing. And he said, you don't know me, but I feel like I know you because I've been watching all your videos. Yeah. And at that moment, I thought I need to be doing a lot more video. Awesome. Were you initially afraid when you first started or how did that oh, go? Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, my first videos were awful. So my home <laughs> office was painted dark brown and I had no lighting and I had no microphone and I was doing it with the webcam on my computer. And when I watch them now, I totally just cringe. But the information was good and people were looking for that information. And so some of my what I think are my worst videos still have a thousand views. So I'm not going to take them down because I think people will forgive the quality of the video if what you're telling them is good information. And seriously, just the more you do it, the better you get. The more you do it, the less nervous you become. Now when I start the camera rolling, I don't ever get nervous because I've been doing this every single week for a year straight. And it's kind of like brushing your teeth. So you just do it. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Well, I remember when I first did my first video and I went back through my YouTube channel and I was like cringing because it was so awful. <laughs> but, right. <laughs> so, but people watch it anyway. 
Yeah, they do. Okay, they so do. <laughs> we are so much more critical of ourselves than other people are. I really honestly feel like prospects don't want someone that's perfect. They don't want somebody that's, you know, wearing their business suit, standing in front of their Lamborghini, showing that I'm so rich, you know. I think they really want real people that they can relate to that they're going to be working with you and they want to feel like they have a connection with you and if your video quality is not great i think they most of the time don't care we're the ones who care yeah yeah so that's so true so let's talk about what happens like let's backtrack through before the call so what is the typical person that calls you how, what are the steps that they're taking to actually like find you and then to the point where they actually pick up the phone and call well, I got a lead yesterday, so I'll use this man as an example. So he called me and I answered the phone and he said, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm talking to you. And I said, well, you called me. That's kind of how the phone and trying to make a joke out of it. He's like, no, seriously. I mean, I, I figured that you were like so busy and important that you wouldn't be answering the phone yourself. And I laughed and I said, I am not famous. Like, <laughs> this is so funny that that's the public's perception of me. So he said, we're retired. We live in Long Island. We, we want to move to the South. We were in this weekend and we drove all around and we looked at the area and it's really nice, but nothing really was grabbing our attention. So then we Googled moving to Savannah and I found your channel and I watched like 15 of your videos and oh my gosh, that's great information. It was so entertaining. You really feel like somebody that we would enjoy working with. So it was cool that he pretty much told me exactly what his process was of how he found my channel and what he thought about it. And it's great because when these people call you, they give you all of their information, right? He gives me his name, his phone number, his email address, his wife's name, his children's name, where his children live, when they are coming to town, how much they want to spend, are they paying cash? I mean, they tell you all of this stuff versus a sign call where it's like pulling teeth just to get their last name out of them. Yes. It's such an enviable position for a real estate agent to have leads coming to them as opposed to mm -hmm. you chasing the leads. Like even like you mentioned when you're, you're calling and all of the, you know, the prospecting and everything, it just makes it so much easier. So right. that's amazing. Now, what about after you get the call? So when you, let's say someone gives you a call and then kind of, you know, what kind of uh, stories do you hear when, like you mentioned a little bit before, when you talk to them and say like, how'd you find me and those types of things, like mm -hmm. what, what, what does that look like? Um, so, I mean, when we have our first conversation, it's usually very comfortable. I feel like it's somebody that I've known for a long time because they are so at ease talking to me because they feel like they know me already, even though I've never spoken to them before they are so at ease that it makes the whole conversation go easier. And then when I meet them for the first time, um, I had a lady that was moving here from Indianapolis and I said, great, let's meet at my office. We'll pull up a bunch of properties on the MLS. You tell me which ones you like, and then we'll go out and we'll drive around and look at these neighborhoods. And she said, uh, she called me and said, I'm at Dunkin' Donuts. How do you like your coffee? I'm bringing you coffee. I've never had a prospect meet wow. me at the office and bring me coffee before. Not ever, not in you know 13 years. It was crazy. And so when I met her, she hugged me. It was like I'd known this woman for years, even though we had literally just met. It's really interesting the dynamics between like calling a FISBO or an expired and having this, where by the time they meet you, they feel like they've known you forever. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. So what kind of videos are you typically creating? Tell us a little bit more about what's on your channel. Sure. I am trying very hard to approach every video as though it's a blog post. And so I'm doing keyword research. So I might have an idea of, you know, I should do a video about how long does it take to buy your first house? Uh, maybe people don't know what the, the process is and how long the whole thing's going to take. So that's my idea for the video. And then I will go do keyword research, just like if I were writing a blog. And I will say, okay, how long does it take to buy a house? Oh, it gets 50,000 searches a month, but the competition is very high. So what are some variations of that keyword? How long does it take to close on a house? Okay, that one only gets 400 searches a month, but the competition is non-existent. Mm -hmm. So even though I would never type in how long does it take to close on a house, apparently lots of other people are. Yeah. So I'll decide, okay, that's going to be my keyword. And then I go make the video using that <laughs> keyword. So I don't make the video first and then try to figure out what my description will be. I do all mm -hmm. that up front. And then when I record my video, I'm saying 
the keyword in the in the video it's in the title it's in the tags it's in the description i'm trying to optimize that description box below the video so that it's like a little mini blog post yes um so in the academy that's exactly what i teach especially when you're doing blogging when you're doing videos that's 100 like spot on so the problem is that people will create videos based on what they think people want. But if you actually go and do the keyword research, you find out number one, you may be using like certain words or phrasing it in a way that they're actually not looking and typing into Google. And then also you're going to be surprised by some of the weird things that people are Googling in your market that you never even thought about because you right. you just take it for granted. Right. So right. it's a really an amazing process that you're actually like doing the research first and then actually doing the video. I think that's a huge, huge part of getting leads from video is doing the research first. And so that's perfect. I agree because I wasn't doing that at the beginning. I started making videos when I lived in my previous market, which was Atlanta. And I would be like, Oh, I've got a great idea for a video. Why do I need a home inspection when I just paid 450 bucks for an appraisal? So I made my video first and then I put it up there and it got like a grand total of 37 views or something like nobody ever saw it. And then I realized it was because nobody is searching for the phrase, home inspection versus appraisal. Yes. Like zero people are typing that in. And if nobody searches for it, it will never get seen. It's not going to show up in search results mm -hmm. if that's not what people are searching for. Yes, absolutely. And then one of the questions that I have for you is that if you are typing something in that could be like a global uh, you know, like how much do I need to put down on a house? Like those types of, of questions. How are you making sure that only like your target audience is seeing those? Like, are you putting in Savannah or how are you kind of localizing it? Well, I'm putting Savannah in all of the tags underneath the video. And at first I thought maybe I should narrow it down so that only local people were seeing the video. And you can do that in your YouTube settings. You can say, will this be everybody in the whole world sees it or everybody in the United States sees it or everybody in Georgia sees it or everybody in Savannah sees it. But so many of my clients are relocating here from out of state that I didn't want to narrow it down. And if somebody in LA sees my video, do I care? No, because I'm getting more watch time and more views. And if they comment or they like it or they share it, even if they are never going to be a prospect for me, those are all positive engagement signals to YouTube. And the more they can boost me up in the search results and in the recommended videos that show up on the sidebar, the happier I am. So I don't care if you live in Turkey and you're not planning on moving to Savannah. If you watch my entire video from start to finish, you are my new best friend because yes. you are making my metrics look phenomenal with YouTube. I love that. And that's such a, a great like attitude to have. I love it. What's your most popular video to date? I'm curious. It's called moving to Savannah. So I had written a blog post first and then I made the video, which was basically just saying in the video what I said in the blog post. It was not reinventing the wheel. It was a video version of the blog post. It's only, it's very short. It's only five minutes long and it's kind of something like the, the 10 reasons why you should move to Savannah. And then I embedded the video in the blog post and I linked to the blog below the video. And now that has had, let me see if I can go over there and look. Um, it's had something like 4,000 views and I posted it last July. Brilliant. The one thing that I love about that most is that once you, if you do a blog post, again, moving to Savannah, and then you add the video inside, you're almost like doubling down on your SEO because people can find you in Google and they can find you in YouTube. And as you just mentioned, Google owns YouTube. So you're kind of getting, killing two birds with one stone, getting more bang for your buck, if you will. So that's brilliant. I love it. Yeah. That. In fact, I just tried that the other day with a different video. I can't remember which one it was, but I went over to Google and I opened opened an incognito window and I typed my keyword in and my video was showing up on the first page of Google results, not the blog post, the video. Yes. Yes. Even for Honey Bar Media, every time I do a blog post, I always try to do a YouTube video with the same exact title, making sure, of course, like you mentioned, that the keywords are in the video and also in the title of the blog post as well and throughout the blog post. So you can, again, double your SEO efforts. Yeah. And I didn't know to do that at the beginning. I thought I should have a different keyword so I wasn't competing yep. with myself. But then uh -huh. I learned, no, it should be the exact same keyword. And you're right. It really doubles down and helps you 
you show up in both places. I, I thought the same exact thing too. And like you said, like once I actually uh, started doing it and tested it, I found the exact opposite. So yeah. <laughs> What about the structure of your videos? Can you talk a little bit more about like what you're including and, and the elements of like a great video for YouTube? Sure. So I always, I, my videos almost have the exact same format every single time. I do a hook, which is um, how long does it take to close on a house? Well, that's what we're talking about today. So stay tuned. And then I have my little animated intro and then I introduce myself and I tell them who I am and where I'm located. Then we talk about the information for the video. And then I wrap it up with some sort of call to action. What do I want them to do? Do I want them to go to my website and download a free ebook? Do I want them to join a Facebook group? Do I want them to comment below if you're you know, curious how long it takes or whatever my call to action might be? And then I have bloopers at the very end. And the reason I started doing bloopers was to encourage people to watch all the way to the end of the video. Yes. Because if I do it every single time, now they come to expect it and the bloopers are funny. People like watching the bloopers and that helps your watch time as well. So YouTube rewards you. If people come to YouTube and they watch your whole video and then they watch another one, even if it's not yours, even if it's somebody else's channel, but they stay on YouTube for a while, yeah. you get rewarded by YouTube for that. And they think, oh, we like this person because she can pull people in and keep them on our platform. So we're going to have her show up higher in the search results. So yes. the blooper thing I just thought it was going to be funny, but in the end, it turned out to be a really great thing. <laughs> so, like one Thank of the you, reasons, Michelle. <laughs> one of the reasons why I love the bloopers so much is because it also increases like no like and trust factor. Because mm -hmm. of course, as you know, people only do trust. So, students uh, doing videos, it's very like sterile and professional and mm -hmm. not professional. I won't say professional. I'll say like formal. And yeah. the, the problem with formal is like times have changed and people with like social media and, and everything, people have gotten a lot more casual with marketing. And so they're used to seeing casual marketing from all of the big brands. And so when you come in front of camera and you're extremely like stiff and sterile, it's like, almost like a turnoff these days anyway. And so the fact that you can show that you're a real person, that you're a real, you know, human, it like humanizes your brand. And I think that that's brilliant on your behalf to do actually do the bloopers because it shows how like, how real and again, how likable you can be, so. Well, you know, I'm kind of a goofball and I joke around a lot and I don't see any reason why you need to suppress your personality because what I have found, so now that I've been doing this for a year, I decided I, decided I was gonna start doing weekly videos last June and I have done every single week without fail except for one time when we had to evacuate for the hurricane last fall. Mm -hmm. And um, in being consistent and doing it every week, what I have found is that the people that call me that want to work with me are people that have very similar personalities to me. So when we meet and we get together, we have such a good time. It's, it's like an old friend that you've known for so long, not a stranger. And I figure the people that are very um, analytical and they, you know, fairly serious and they're very introverted, they're probably not going to call me because mm. Like when on, on my videos, they might feel like, whoa, this woman is out there. And that's okay because I don't know that I would have as much fun working with somebody that was that completely opposite. Maybe I would. I don't know. Yeah. But I'm finding that the people that I work with, like they're the people that you just want to go out to dinner with on Saturday night because they're so much fun to be around. Love that. Love that. And then Cindy asks, how long are your videos typically? I try to shoot for about five minutes. So theoretically on YouTube, they should be longer on Facebook. They, they say the shorter, the better, but on YouTube, the longer, the better, because you're trying to get as much watch time as you can from YouTube. However, we all have short attention spans and nobody's going to watch a 10 minute long video where I'm just droning on and on pointing to charts behind me. That was yeah. I afford them. Yeah. So I'm trying to make them, you know, four five, six minutes long at the most. And I'm trying to make them somewhat entertaining. So they're not completely boring. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Okay. And then what about when like your, your, you know, your posting schedule? So you mentioned that you do videos like once a week. So tell us a little bit more about your, how you're planning them out and actually getting them out every single week. Sure. So I put it on my calendar. The day that I record a video, it is an appointment. It is not changeable. I would not change an appointment with a client to go do something with somebody else. It's on my calendar. So every Thursday morning at 930, 
Like I take the kids to school, then I go back home when the house is empty and I record my video. And then I give myself a few days to do all of the editing and make it look good and upload it to YouTube and write my whole description. And then I post it on Monday. And that's what I did for a long, long time. Then I started thinking, you know what, if I'm gonna get up and do my hair and makeup and get dressed, I may as well record the whole month's worth of videos in one sitting. It only takes me 15 minutes per video. So I can block out an hour to an hour and a half and record all four videos and be done with it. And then just have to edit them throughout the month but I don't have to set up the lights and set up all the equipment and do all that stuff. So that has been a huge, huge time saver for me to do the bulk bulk filming. So for anybody that's interested, um, I have a like a little cheat sheet on how to create a month's worth of videos in one day. And that's it basically does exactly what Karen just described. So you're doing your hair, your light, your makeup and all of that stuff. And then since you've already done it, you might as well just film all the videos. And if you're doing four videos, like one per week, then you might as well just shoot them all in one day because you'll save a ton of time. So if yep. you're interested and you want that free guide, then um, if you are already like have access to the free resource library, it's in the library and you can watch it there. Or if you don't, then feel free to go here and you can just go ahead and download the guide simply. Um, someone else asked like, what about the, um, how long did it take you until you got your first lead? It took three months. I remember it so clearly because I started posting them in June. And in September, it was fall break and we went to Disney World. And we were driving home from Disney and my phone rang. So I answered as my husband was driving. And when I said, oh, that's great. You want to sell your house? How did you find or how did you hear about me? And he said, I found you on YouTube. And I muted the phone and I was like, yeah. Wow. And my husband looked at me like, what are you doing? And I'm like, yeah. I was yeah. so excited. It was my very first lead was a come list me phone call. Amazing. So when I showed up for my listing appointment, I I was prepared. Like I'm up against other agents. I'm going to have to justify myself. I'm going to have to, you know, convince them why I'm the best choice. And when I said, who else are you considering? They're like, well, nobody. We, we picked you. Like, where do we sign? I was like, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, that's never happened to me before. I've been licensed since 2005 and that's never happened to me before. And so every seller lead that I've gotten from my YouTube channel has been just like that. They're not even interviewing anybody else. They pretty much already decided that they like you. They trust you. They like your personality. They feel that you're the right one to handle it for them. Yeah. And it's just come over and, and let's do the paperwork. Unreal. Unreal. Yeah. So what about um, actually getting people to like enticing people to give you a call or because like you before you had mentioned, sometimes the objective is for them to leave a comment or the call to action might be to give you a call. So what type of lead magnets are you using um, in your videos in order to get people to take action and be actually like opt in and become a lead? That's probably the most challenging part for me because I feel like I want to make a different lead magnet for every video and there's just only so much hours in the day right so if i am doing a video like my my intent was to specialize with military because my husband was in the air force for many years and we have two large bases where i live so i thought i want to work with military so if i do a video about um are you pcsing to hunter army airfield my call to action might be, okay, so now you know what it's like to live in Savannah, but do you know anything about buying a house using your VA entitlement? Click right here and go to my website and download my free VA buyer's guide. Yes. And I'll try to make up, may, I probably have like six or eight different lead magnets that I will rotate through. So anytime I do a video that's geared toward military, I usually have the VA buyer's guide. Um, if it's a seller's guide, it's or if it's a seller video, it's usually you want to know what your house is worth, click here and go do my um, free home valuation. If it's a buyer's guide, it might be, uh, I don't know, how much money do you need for a down payment or a down payment assistance program, something like that. So it's usually just a very short PDF. It might only be two or three pages long at the very most. And they go to my website and they have to put in at least their name and email address in order to download it. So if you are, one of the things that I, I recommend is that if you're actually doing, um, like if you, 
what I recommend is basically creating all of your lead magnets. So this maybe might be helpful to someone that's watching. So if you have silos of things that you're talking about, so for instance, you have a silo for buyers, or if you have a silo for sellers, or just even one for local residents, and then you're basically creating lead magnets for those three silos. So what would, what lead magnets would be good for buyers? And then maybe if you just, again, batch out your content, just take one day and just create like two or three lead magnets for buyers and then two or three for sellers. And then that way, whenever you're doing your videos or your and or your blog posts, you can just pull from those silos, like from those lead magnet silos so that that way, whichever one's appropriate, that you can actually just throw that into the video and then get leads that way. Like that's what I do for the mar my marketing business. So for instance, if someone's interested in social media, I have a social media lead magnet, the content calendar. So if that maybe get the wheels turning for someone who who might be watching and might be might be helpful for someone to to see that. That's a great suggestion. That's what I need to do. Okay, cool. Awesome. And then what are you doing to film your videos? Like how, what's your equipment like? That's probably the best part is I have very little equipment. So <laughs> I film on my iPad. The only reason I use my iPad and not my phone is because the screen is better and I can see it better without having to put on my reading glasses yes. like this because the phone is so little. Yeah. So I have a tripod that I've had for 20 years. I did have to buy a little adapter off of Amazon to hold the great big iPad. It was something like 10 or 15 bucks on Amazon. And um, I bought a $20 microphone. It is nothing fancy. You could with a Bluetooth headset on, that would be perfectly fine. The one I have just clips on your lapel and then it's got something like a 30 foot cord. And that mm -hmm. way I don't have to be like three inches from the camera because the cord is so short. Um, and at first I didn't use any lighting at all, but last Christmas I put some lights on my Amazon wish list and I got lights for Christmas. Yay. Nice. <laughs> and they're not, they're not expensive. It was like two, a set of two for $50. It's the one that's, it's like a tripod with the, light bulb and a big umbrella in the front yeah. of it. Uh-huh. Soft bulb. And I just I just leave them thank you. That's what it's actually called. Uh -huh. Who knew? <laughs> I actually just leave them set up in my office all the time. I used to put them away each time. Now I just I shove them in the corner and then on recording day I pull them back out again. Yes. I actually uh I have a whole in my office I have everything set up. I have my soft boxes, my ring light, I have a webcam, I have you know, a DSLR, I rarely use that really anymore. But if you leave it out and you don't touch it, you'll do more video, I promise. <laughs> like, so right. that's like one little pro tip that I have for people because when I was like putting everything away and then bringing it all out again, it was a disaster. So, but if you leave it out and you just have it, everything hooked up all the time and you just have it in your office ready to go, all I do is turn my lights on, turn my webcam on or my DSLR, whichever one I'm using and go, that's it. So, and then for anyone that's interested, um, I have like a little tools section on my website and it has all of the equipment. A lot of people actually ask me what camera I'm using right now and what microphone I'm using. And a lot of that is listed right there. And one other thing I wanted to mention, cause this is so smart of you is the lapel mic. So the lavalier mic, the one that clips on to your, um, to any part of your clothing is genius because a lot of times I'll see people doing videos from far away and you, you can't hear the, like there's cars going by if they're doing it in the neighborhoods or whatever. And it's very distracting for the person that's actually watching the YouTube video because they can't hear. So to eliminate all of that, you get a lapel mic and like Karen mentioned, you can be 30 feet away and someone can be filming you and you're crystal clear on the sound, which is like, such a big deal when you're filming. Yeah, and the, the one that I bought was only 20 bucks. It's not like it was really yep. expensive. Yes, absolutely. So um, do you have, let's see. Oh, how long does it typically take you to create just uh, one video? So if I'm shooting for a video that's around five minutes long finished, it takes me about 15 minutes to record it. And because I use the same format every single time, I say the hook, I say my intro, then I say the body of the stuff, then I say the call to action. The hook, the intro, and the call to action are pretty much the same thing every single video. So now I only really have to learn the part that I'm going to talk about for this specific week. So it's really easy. I just, I print out like a five bullet point cheat sheet and I will say, you know, 
how long does it take to, ha to buy a house? That's what we're talking about right now. Okay, I screwed that up, let's do it again. How long does it take to buy a house? Well, that's what we're talking about today, stay tuned. Okay, good, that worked, moving on. Now we say, hey, I'm Karen Carr, I'm a realtor in Savannah, Georgia with XYZ Brokerage. Um, you know, if you're, this is your first time here, be sure to hit the subscribe button, da 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 da. And then I'll look down and say, okay, bullet point number one is, so you're wondering how long it takes to buy a house. Well, here are the things that decide what that, how long that's going to be. Number one. Yeah. Number yeah. two. And so it's not like I'm memorizing the whole thing yeah. because later when I go to edit it, I'm going to cut all that part out where I was like, yeah, you know, doing <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. And if I cough or I sneeze or if a, a train goes by or a plane flies over my house or the dog barks, that happens yeah. all the time. The dog barks and I'm like, okay, because I know I'm going to cut that part out and I don't do a lot of really fancy editing. I mean, I'm just doing pretty basic stuff like chop the beginning off where I leaned forward and I pressed the start button and chop the end off where I leaned forward to stop it. Uh, any mistakes. If I had to do multiple takes because I tripped over my words or the car honked outside, whatever, mm -hmm. then I take out the parts that were wrong and I'm just leaving the parts that were the best take of each section. And then I might drop in some, so now to get technical, we call it B-roll, which is where we have a picture or a video that's that's what's being seen, but you're still talking underneath it. Mm -hmm. um, if you're doing video editing, that kind of makes sense. And that way, You've got something else to look at besides just me because a five minutes of me talking at the camera like this would be incredibly boring. So we want to give them something else to look at as well mm -hmm. so that it's interesting and it yeah. makes them want to watch because five minutes is not, it's not a long period of time, but when you're watching a YouTube video that's boring, oh my God, it's yeah. interminable, right? Yes. So yes. trying to give them stuff to look at just to keep them engaging and most of those I just make in Canva. So I will go over to Canva and I'll have a very plain background with bullet point number one and then bullet point number two and bullet point number three. And when I say, so number three is that little thing pops up on the camera for, or on the screen for them to look at. It goes away after a couple of seconds, doesn't require any fancy equipment or editing skills. You just make it in Canva and it takes if you use the same um, layout every single time, it takes yeah. like literally two and a half minutes to create because all you're doing is changing the words. Yes, I actually do the same thing. A lot of people comment on like, like what I use for video. And I see even a couple people like Sabrina and Cindy have asked, what are you using to edit the videos? And like, I have the same exact process. I use iMovie, which is free. It comes free on my Mac. And then for all of the like graphics that pop in and slide in and all of, and my B-rolls and all of that stuff, I use Canva. Um, and I always use the same templates. So I create, I design one template. And then like you just mentioned, if I'm talking about tip number two, I'll replace the one with a two and then just write the little title and that's it. And it's so simple. And so I'll just basically, if I'm talking about five tips, I'll create five little graphics in Canva, download them all, and then put them right into iMovie. And then as they're sliding in and out, whenever I'm talking, that's all I do. And then um, I also just, like you said, just chop off in between. So I like, if I mess up, I will clap really loudly. And then I'll know, because you can see on the sound below that it's like a peak in the sound. And so then I just know where to chop all of the parts that I messed up. And also as you, when you first start, and you may agree with this, Karen, is like, it takes, it, I did had to do everything in a lot of takes, but now I can actually shoot in a five minute video. Sometimes I can do it in one take. So, or if the dog barks or if, you know, the FedEx truck comes, I can just chop that part out. But for the most part, I'm doing them in one or two or three takes now. Has that been your experience as well? Yes. The more you do it, the easier it gets. When you're saying the same thing over and over and over again, it is so much easier. And my process is almost exactly the same as yours. I use iMovie because I have it already and it's free. Yeah, yeah. And I use the Canva slides. And not only is that faster, but then we've got consistent branding because you're using the same slides on every single video. You're reinforcing your brand. So make it once and then use it over and over again. Love it. Love it. So before we start taking questions from people that are commenting, if you have a question, please go ahead and comment below and then we'll go ahead and ask Karen all of your questions. I've seen a lot of them coming in. So before we ask, uh, start doing the Q&A session, I just want to know, is there 
anything that just like, what made you go all in with video? I know you touched on this a little bit, but like, why not door knocking? Why not cold calling? Or what, what was it about this that made you just be like, this is it. This is what I'm going to focus on. Well, we had just moved to Savannah and I was thinking, okay, great. I'm starting over in another market again, because when I first got licensed, I was in Northern California. Then we went to Hilton Head, South Carolina. Then we went to Atlanta. Then we went to Savannah. So I thought, great, I'm doing it again. I'm not door knocking here. It's like 95 degrees and 8,000% humidity. I will die. <laughs> yeah. And I took a course through Keller Williams where I had to call 20 people a day and I darn near had a nervous breakdown because I just said, I did not get my real estate license so I could be a telemarketer. This goes against every fiber of my being. I can't even tell you how much I hate it. I would rather poke my eyeballs out with a fork than do this every day. <laughs> yeah. So after taking that eight week course, I was like that I'm never doing that again. And so, in fact, I just saw the receptionist at the office yesterday and she was like, are you going to take that course? And I said, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that was it. She was yeah. like, no, no explanation. It was like, nope, no explanation necessary. The answer yeah. is no. Yeah. So th when I got to Savannah, and I can't remember if I said this already, uh, my phone rang and it was this gentleman that said, we found you online. We saw all the videos and um, we're going to move to the area and will you help us? And it was at that moment where I just had this complete aha moment of if I, if he found me from the videos that I was doing where I wasn't even trying, like I wasn't doing keyword research, I wasn't planning them in ahead, I wasn't using any consistency whatsoever. It was simply, oh, I had an idea for a video. I should make a video. I'm sitting in my car in front of the board of realtors waiting for this meeting to start, but I'm 20 minutes early. So I'm going to record a video while I'm sitting in my car and I'll upload it later today. And if those were working for me, how much better would it be if I actually had a plan and if I had a posting schedule and I was consistent? So at that point, it's kind of that old adage of when the student is ready, the teacher appears. I started mm -hmm. figuring out all these people on YouTube who have channels about how to have a YouTube channel. So I discovered Sonny Leonard Doozy and Nick mm -hmm. Nimmin and Jessica Stansberry. And I started watching all of their videos just talking about how to have a presence on YouTube when you're a business owner. Mm -hmm. And I just started doing everything that they said. And within three months, I started getting those kinds of phone calls. Yes. Yes. I'm a big fan of all of the people that you mentioned. And mm -hmm. a lot of the time, what I do is I look outside of real estate to figure out what's happening and what are the best practices and what's working right now. Because sometimes I feel like in real estate, like we all kind of just copy each other and if you're a business and you want to stand out, copying someone else and what they're doing is probably not going to, especially if they're in your local market, it may not be the best solution. So if you're looking outside of real estate to figure out what are the best practices in general, and then how can I apply that to real estate? And I just wanted to mention really quickly, like on the cold calling and door knocking, I, it, it's not my thing either. Um, I've done it. And when I first joined KW, I, you know, I took uh, you know, ignite. And I was like, yes, I'm going to do this. And the first thing is they're like, you got a cold call and door knock. And I was like, okay. Like I had an open mind. I was like, I'll try it. You know, I have a sales background. I'll do it. And so I will never forget. Um, I actually was in a community and it was a gated community and I live across the way in another gated community. So I'm, I'm a neighbor of this community and a resident. And I will never forget the security guard rolls up next to me and he's like, you, <laughs> you got to go. And like, he put me in the back of his little golf cart and escorted me off the property. And I was like, I mean, I had like on a full, like I was in business clothes. I was like, not like threatening at all. And it was the most like embarrassing, probably one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. And nobody knows except for me and the security guard, but it was like, I have never been kicked out of anywhere in my entire life ever. So for me, like I figured out that day, like, I'm very sensitive. I, I can't handle it and I don't have a thick enough skin. And if you do, that's great. But I, it's, it's just not something that I could do again. So yeah, I can't handle the rejection. Seriously. Yeah. When I was cold calling people and they were mean to me, I just yeah. wanted to go cry in the bathroom for half an hour. Like I cannot handle the rejection. So that's not a good fit for me, obviously. And what, what I like about this is that there's no rejection. Like if they don't like you, they don't call you, but you didn't know that they didn't call you. So like, there's literally no rejection whatsoever. And all yeah. I get is positive feedback. When somebody calls me, they're overflowing with compliments and you're kind of like, yeah, I like this. This is cool. 
Yeah, that's amazing. Um, along that same vein, I, before, again, I swear we're going to answer questions in just a second, but this is a big deal because uh, I'm starting to encounter this more and more like as my YouTube channel channel grows and as my business grows, like, do you ever get haters? And if so, how are you dealing with it or trolls? I have only had one person and it was every time I posted a video about the military, he would make some sort of snarky comment. And at mm -hmm. first I would answer all of the comments and I would he like, well, there was one where I said, um, if you're active duty, you get a base allowance for housing. So let's say that your BAH is 1400 a month. What if you bought a house with zero down in your VA entitlement and then your mortgage payment was less than 1400 a month? You're buying a house and living in it for free. Why would yeah. you not want to do that? Yeah. And he's like, well, people PCS in and out of the area and nobody ever wants to buy a house. And I said, really? Because a lot of my clients have bought houses. But, you know, if you're going to be leaving soon, I can understand. And I was trying to be very diplomatic. And he just kept coming back with everything that I said was a real snarky comment. And finally, I just, you know what? Delete. And I blocked him from being able to post on my YouTube videos anymore because this is my community and I'm not putting up with that BS. Like, yeah, seriously, yeah. if you go spew your hatred somewhere else, but it doesn't need to be on my channel. He's the only one that I've ever had a problem with in a year. I literally, I, I've, I've been pretty good about like not getting a lot of trolls and haters, but I, today for the first time ever, I got my first hate mail and the person emailed me and they were like, you're the most annoying person. And I was like, they're like, this is the most annoying email I've ever gotten. And I wanted to reply back and be like, well, this is the most annoying email I've ever gotten. So now we're even, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I, was just like, I mean, but then I was like, okay, I'm going to take the high road and I just deleted it. So, but it's like for anyone out there who's like scared to do video or scared to put themselves out there like here's the thing if you don't put yourself out there you're not going to get business you know without of course still cold calling or door knocking but you're in front of people who everyone's worried about what do I you know who's going to judge me and and what do other people think about me so if you can just put yourself out there and just think in your mind like I'm worried about what other people think about me, but everyone else is too. So you know what? Forget it and just move on with your life. It's like, it's for me, it's not worth dealing with one or two haters or trolls than to just not be able to put myself out there and actually grow my business. So for anyone that's looking for encouragement. Right. I mean. under her eyes and they're going to judge me on my appearance. Well, fine, screw them. I don't want to work with those kind of people anyway. <laughs> right. And totally. when you have a YouTube channel, you have the ability to delete hateful comments. So if anybody ever said, oh, you're the most boring person I've ever seen, you know, you really need to go become a mathematician, I can just delete it and I can block that person from saying anything again. But sometimes when, and this hasn't happened on my YouTube channel, but when I get criticism where I'm super defensive and I just, oh, I'm so angry about it. Sometimes I step back and the reason why I'm so defensive about it is because they're actually right and I just don't want to hear it. So I try really hard to like let it sit for a little while and then maybe the next day think, was there any validity in that? Mm -hmm. And if there is, okay, is there something I can do about it to try to make it better? So if somebody puts a, a hateful comment on your YouTube channel, if it was something really obnoxious about, your looks or your age or the way your voice sounds or anything like that, I would just delete it because yeah. seriously, there are little trolls that they'll say anything because they're anonymous. They don't even have their own picture as their, mm -hmm. their icon. They're not using a real name. And the only reason they feel brave enough to do that is because it's totally anonymous. So just delete it. But if they yeah. said something where they actually had maybe a little bit of truth in there, then, you know, maybe that would be an opportunity to be better for the next time. Sometimes criticism is not always constructive. So even if it's unconstructive criticism, sometimes there is, like you mentioned, a little bit of validity in that so that you can just grow and be better. But again, you're not going to get better if you're not doing it. The only way to do it to get better is to actually just put yourself out there and start doing it. So right. um, let's go ahead and answer a couple of questions. So Deborah asks, did your referral come from your YouTube connections as well? So do you mean like referrals from other agents that have met me through YouTube? A couple have come that way, but the vast majority of them are just people that are Googling information. So like that listing that I got, I, I can't even remember which video that came from, but it was something about 
um, how to stage your home on a budget, I think was that video that he was the very first one that I got. So he was Googling how to stage your home and YouTube is smart, it knows where you're located. So even though he didn't say how to stage your home in Savannah, Georgia, uh. it still showed him my video because that's where he is and that's where I am. I think YouTube has kind of figured that part out already. Okay. Um, but yes, now that I've had, I, I am fully aware, I have 550 subscribers on my channel and I bet 500 of them are real estate agents. I totally know that and I'm totally okay with that too because again, you're all helping my watch time. So thank you very much. <laughs> and, um, and I don't care if the prospects subscribe or not. If they get on YouTube and they just binge watch a bunch of videos and call me, I don't care whether they subscribed or not because I got the ultimate prize, which was you became my client. You know, you just signed a buyer broker to work with me and you're buying a $600,000 house when my medium home price is in the 200s. So, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't really mind if other agents are subscribing to my channel, but then we become friends and we become friends on Facebook and now we're referring business to each other. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty great too. Awesome. And then what is your YouTube channel? It's extremely complicated. It's Karen Carr real estate. You know, I, it used to be like uh, Karen Carr Atlanta realtor. And then I moved and I thought, well, I'm not going to use my location in the name again in case heaven forbid I move again. I don't want to have to rename my channel again. Yeah. So it's just Karen Carr real estate. Okay. Awesome. And then someone asked, uh, Trang asked, Aaron, what kind of camera are you using? You are in super HD. Uh, thank you very much for that. I actually just use a Logitech. It's a Logitech C920 and it's like 50 bucks. And I just clip it like right onto my MacBook and, and then it just projects. So instead of using the webcam that comes with my actual Mac, I bought an auxiliary one and it's much better because it shoots in widescreen and it shoots in HD as you've just commented. So, and again, for anybody who's interested, um, I have a tools section where I list all of my tools, what I use for video and all of those. Um, and, and just then, to reiterate or to, for comparison, I am also using the webcam on my Mac, but I don't have an external camera. This is the one on my laptop. I don't have any lighting right now. I'm sitting in front of a window. So I'm facing the window and then there's the camera and then there's me. And it's not the greatest quality in the world, but it's perfectly acceptable. Yes. So if that's all you have, use it. Yes. As long as you have a window and a laptop that has a decent, you know, uh, quality of video, like use it. Don't let any of the tech stop you from actually moving forward with video. Yeah. I mean, start making them. And then when you get your first closing, you can go out and buy yourself two lights for 50 bucks if you really exactly. feel like it's necessary. <laughs> but you know what? If you have an iPhone or a droid that's less than three years old, use that. The video mm -hmm. quality in that camera is probably fantastic. And you don't, you don't need to go buy an $800 phone. Yeah, I agree. I have a, a I have a $1,200 DSLR and I literally use my Logitech most of the time to shoot, which is what's again, 50 bucks. So uh, Amanda asks, do you run YouTube ads? Is that a thing? If so, are they geo-targeted? That is a thing. And no, I have not done it yet. I've thought about it, but then I thought, why should I? I'm getting all these leads for free. Why spend money if I'm getting them for free? But then again, maybe I'd start getting a lot more leads. So I have not yet, but I'm thinking of it. Um, it would depend on what the video was. If I were going to advertise that moving to Savannah lead, then it would probably be targeted to everybody who does not live in Savannah, but still lives in the United States. Um, I did get a client from Cairo and it was really difficult to try to get them pre-approved. So I thought, okay, maybe I'll just stick with people that live in the country <laughs> yeah. because we don't have to deal with FERP done, all these crazy laws about where did your money come from and, and how do I pre-approve you when you have no credit history in the United States at all? Um, so yeah, I would probably try to target it somehow. And if it was something, if it was a seller lead, then it would absolutely be geo-targeted to my immediate area because if you're selling, then you're a homeowner here and now. Um, I'm just now starting to kind of, uh, experiment with YouTube retargeting and YouTube ads for my marketing business. So I will let you guys know, especially like if you're in the Academy, we can talk about that, especially in the Facebook group. Uh, and I'm happy to talk about my experience with that, but I haven't done it for real estate agents, but yes, YouTube ads is a thing. It's, and it's actually becoming more and more popular. It's not as easy to run as a Facebook ad. So keep that in mind. It's a lot more technical, but it is a thing. Um, and then 
Ashley asks, are you licensed in multiple states? Not anymore. So at one time I was licensed in three states, but now I have let my my California license lapse. I let my South Carolina license lapse, and now I'm getting my South Carolina license again, just because I live eight miles from the border. Mm. <laughs> and I have a lot of people that are considering living on the, the South Carolina side. So I'm in the process of renewing my license. If I didn't live that close to the border, I wouldn't bother. Okay, cool. And then um, Nisa asks, where do you get the information for your blogs and videos in Google? Um, we covered this a little bit in the beginning of the video, but if you can just do a quick recap, that'd be great. Sure. I try to think of what are the questions that I get asked regularly by clients, because if you work with first time buyers, they ask the same questions all the time. So maybe make a list of all the questions that they ask. Um, what are the questions that sellers ask you and make a list of all those questions. You could probably come up with at least 20 ideas in 10 minutes just from questions that you get asked by your current and past clients. And then, then go do your, your keyword research. So I keep a little notebook with me at all times. And then when I have a great idea, I've got a page in here called brain dump and I just go, Ooh, here's my idea for the video. And then later when I'm sitting at my computer, I go do the keyword research and I figure out what the exact keyword for that idea would be. And I just keep a running list in my notebook so that on video day, I'm like, okay, I've got four ideas for the coming month and I'm going to bang out all four videos back to back. It'll probably take me an hour to an hour and a half. I used to like run and change my clothes in between. Now I don't even care. Like, do they yeah. care that I'm wearing the same shirt? No. I'm, do they even notice? Probably not. So I just record one video and I do it all in one take. Even if I, if I stumble over my words and I have to say things over and over again, but I don't keep pressing the on off button because when I sit down at iMovie and I just have one big long piece, mm -hmm. it's easier for me to work with than having like 15 different. And I got to remember, well, was this a good one or was this the one I had to delete? Yes. And the best, the best trick I ever got was to start at the end and work your way backwards. So when you're on your timeline, you go to the end, you know that when you were recording, the last take was the best one. And I loved your thing. I usually go, and yeah. so I see three little clap or three little spikes on the audio line. And I know that that's where I need to cut and then take out everything that came before it. And it just makes, I, I used to, it used to take me something like two hours to edit a video and now I can bang it out in probably 45 minutes. So nice. Yeah. And I actually, I never thought about starting from the end. So that's a great tip. Uh, I wish I would have known that a long time ago. <laughs> so. I learned that from Primal Video on YouTube. That was yeah. his, his idea. And I was like, oh, that was brilliant. So smart. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then Amanda also asked for people with zero experience, what are some resources that you can use to help us get started? Um, I think probably the notebook uh, that you mentioned in the keyword research, I think that's a, a great tip right there. Yeah, that helps me a lot. And I just bought that notebook and I carry it with me everywhere I go because you never know when you're going to have a great idea and then you can just mm -hmm. jot it down or use the notes program on your phone or whatever you like to use for keeping track of stuff. And um, Sunny Leonard Doozy's channel was enormously helpful. I don't know if um, we need to spell her name and I'll butcher it. It's like it's Sunny, S-U-N-N-Y. L-E-N-A-R-D-U-Z-Z-I, -I, I believe. She's uh -huh. got a channel on YouTube where she talks about having a channel on YouTube. And she's uh -huh. really like down to earth and not super techie and explains it in a way that's very accessible. And I just binge watched a ton of her videos at the very beginning while I was learning. And um, that was really, really helpful too. And then, you know, watch other people. So I live in Savannah. If I Google... Seattle real estate agents and I watch a bunch of their videos by all means if somebody does a video and it's a great idea make the same video you're not going to plagiarize them because you're not going to say the exact same words but you can use the same topic the same general idea mm -hmm. and just make it your own and make it about your city and because you don't compete with them they're all the way across the country um, you know just don't copy it verbatim and you'll be fine yeah yeah I love that and then what are your thoughts on formal versus like professional videography versus your phone or your computer to shoot? 
So I have only done a professional video one time, and it was because I had intended to run it as an ad, and I wanted it to look really good. All the rest of them are not professional at all, and people seem to really love them. I don't feel like it needs to be super polished and tons of editing. Um, you know, if, if it's for a listing, by all means, have professional photos taken. But even so, at the last listing I took, I had my husband filming me in front of the house. And it was kind of like, you want a fence? How's this for a fence? And it was very, um, very informal. And the, the seller saw it and he's like, oh my God, I watched it 15 times. I just love that so much. I sent it to all my friends. I think that we feel like we need to be so professional and so polished and so perfect, or we're not going to be able to put it out there. And that's not the case. I mean, if it is genuine and real and people enjoy watching it, that's so much more effective than, hi, I'm Karen and I'm a real estate agent. And they're just like, ah, you're just another boring salesperson. The studies have actually shown that that is actually true. So when it's, again, too formal, too <laughs> sterile, because people can't connect with you. So if it's very like over the top, like again, a listing video, that's totally different. But if you're actually trying to make a video to connect with people to establish no like and trust and remember factor, it actually works against you if it's like, too sterile and too formal. So I agree with that 100%. And a lot of studies have shown that that's the case. So you'll notice like even with, like with my channels and stuff, like a lot of people will comment, like, I like how real you are. And I'm like, well, it, okay. <laughs> but I, I never right. thought about it that way, you know, but it's true. And, and I find myself when I'm looking at other people's videos, I connect with them instantly when it's just them, you know, just being themselves. So it really humanizes your brand. So I agree with that totally. Yep. And, and then, then when you meet with them for the first time and you show up for that first appointment, really all they're looking for is to say that, yes, she is in person, the same person mm -hmm. that she is on camera. And as long as you are, and you're not trying to pull one over on me and you're as dull as dishwasher, dishwater, <laughs> then like, where do I sign? And getting them to sign a buyer broker or to sign the listing agreement it's so much easier. There's like no obstacle. Oh, I love it. Love it. And then which tool are you using to analyze your keywords? I like keywords everywhere. I was using it in Google AdWords until they changed it so that you had to be running an ad in order to use it. And it's not very yeah. user friendly. Anyway, keywords everywhere is a free plugin for Chrome and Firefox, I believe. And I love it because anything that I search for in the Google search bar, when it shows me the results, it shows me exactly what the and or sorry, what the monthly search volume is and what the competition is. So it makes it really fast for you to do keyword research. I also do keyword research um, using a free tool called Uber Suggest. Um, it used to be kind of a weird tool, but actually it just got bought out by a really well-known SEO strategist named Neil Patel, who I follow. And it's a really, really great tool to do some keyword research. So that's Uber Suggest. That's U-B-E-R Suggest.io, I think. And then um, another one that I use when I'm actually looking for keywords on YouTube, I use a tool called TubeBuddy and it's a plugin and it actually will show you like the tags that people are using. And it's a really, really great feature to kind of get ideas and inspiration of what should be searched in your local market or just, you know, like in general, real estate in general. Yes, I totally forgot to bring up TubeBuddy. I love TubeBuddy and they have a free plan or they have paid plans and even the paid plans are super dirt cheap. I probably paid something like, I don't know, $8 a month maybe for you to be able to do all kinds of research on tags and it shows you how you're ranking compared to other videos. Um, I love TubeBuddy. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Annette asks, uh, how many videos do you do a month? Four, unless I get a new listing and then I do a video for the listing as well. But I just do one video a week and YouTube rewards you for consistency. So it is better to do one video every week on Thursday at 3 p.m. than it is to do two this week and one the next week and three the following week. If you can be consistent with your posting schedule, then you will be so rewarded with showing up higher in the search results. Perfect. 
Um, Karen, do you edit on an iPad or Mac versus Windows? I do it on my Mac. I know a lot of people that will edit on their phone or their iPad. Again, reading glasses, old. I, I can't <laughs> I can't do stuff on my, my little tiny devices. I just can't do it anymore. I much prefer to be sitting at my my 20 inch computer at home or whatever it is. And um, I just do it on my Mac. I've been a Mac user for like 10 years now. So I don't know a lot of the programs for Windows. I've heard that DaVinci Resolve is very good. And there was another one I heard recently, and now I can't remember what it's called. Um, Filmora, I think it was. Oh, yeah, so, Filmora. Okay, yeah. so there are, there are video editing packages for Windows that are free or very inexpensive, but I haven't used any of them. Filmora is kind of like the Canva of filming, if you will. Ah, but I okay. personally like iMovie because I think iMovie is so simple. And again, it's free. So why not? Right. Um, and then Cindy asks, how many videos did you record before you actually posted a video online? That's a great question. I don't think I stockpiled any of them. I think that as soon as I recorded them, I published them. Like I, when I was living in Atlanta and I had no consistency, I never thought of, oh, I should have at least 10 or something up there. It just, mm -hmm. I made the video and I published the video. And then when I decided I was going to start posting consistently, I did, but I just posted it when it, I, like my, my day for publishing is Monday. So that first Monday, boom, I put up a video. Yeah, awesome. And then Johnny asks, which is, I think this is a brilliant question. Um, do you ever post non-related topics? So I think he means like, do you, do you ever do videos about stuff that's outside of real estate? occasionally, but that's not the norm. And when I do, I try to tie it into living in Savannah. So I did a video a week or two ago about where can you go on vacation that's road trip distance from Savannah. And I talked about going to Palm Coast, Florida and said it's only a three hour drive and this is what it looks like. And it's a great place to go on vacation where you feel like you're in on a tropical paradise, but it only took you three hours to get there and you didn't have to pay for airfare. Or I talk about if you're going to go to Disney World, this was my favorite app for not having to stand in line. Or um, there was a parade on Tybee Island, which is one of the islands off of Savannah. That's like the most fun thing I ever did. So I said, the Tybee Island Beach, Beach Bum Parade is coming up next Friday. This is what it looks like. This is why you need to go. So it's not just like random stuff. It's either about living in Savannah or coming to Savannah or fun stuff to do in Savannah, but it's all tied into Savannah. But of the top 10 videos, the best performing videos on my channel, nine of them are about real estate. Gotcha. That probably has to do with the fact that people are Googling and when people are on search and Googling something, they have intent. So yes. they're, you know what I mean? Like looking for real estate stuff. My, um, just hold two cents on this for you know anyone who's watching is like if you're a real estate agent and you're doing things about like um, events and local restaurants and things that involve around your community, the purpose of those posts is to get people to come to your website or like Karen mentioned, increase your YouTube watch time or subscribe to your channel. Because if they're looking at events in your community, they probably live there, right? They're probably residents. So what you can do is the minute they hit your, um, if, if, if it's your YouTube channel and you're, you're, you know, you want to run ads to retarget those people, you can, but ideally you have a link and then they go to your blog. And the minute someone hits your blog, you can pixel them on Facebook. If you have a retargeting pixel installed. So you're driving traffic and you're talking about community and the things that are around you, what you're looking to do is you're just looking to get local residents to hit your site so that, again, you can run ads to them in the future because you know that those people are residents and everyone in your farm is going to buy or sell or invest at some point in time in the future. So that's yep. just my two cents on that. Um, and then I also wanted to yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say one of the top performing videos on my site, I or on my channel, I'm not even in the video. So for anybody that's freaked out about being on camera, I went over to a neighborhood. I have one of those um, mounts that goes on the dashboard of your car. That's just a big suction cup that holds your phone. And I just turned the phone around and I drove through the neighborhood with it pointing through my dirty windshield and said, <laughs> you know, this is what this neighborhood looks like. Here's the golf course. Here's the restaurant. Here's the pool. 
sold, this is what the home is, this is how long they take to sell. And I did a voiceover, but my face was nowhere on camera for that video. And that thing has had thousands of views. And of course the call to action is, are you looking for a home in Bridge Mill? Click this link below, go over to my website, you'll see everything that's currently for sale in, my, in that neighborhood without having to register. And I make sure that I say that because you know, people don't want to have to sign in. But once they're getting all that information, then they fill out a lead form and they're like, oh, tell me about this house. And now you've got all their information. I actually had a GoPro from before. So I just bought a suction cup from Amazon for like 20 bucks. I put it on the hood of my car, outside of my car, and had it facing towards <laughs> towards the neighborhood. And I just filmed every single neighborhood and then posted them all on YouTube for like when I first became an agent. So that's another tip. you can do that easily too. Yeah, the last time I did it, the last time I did it, I did that. I stuck it on the uh, the side view mirror. My husband drove about two miles an hour and I had it outside the car yeah. so it wasn't going through the windshield. But same yeah. thing, just a big old suction cup with my phone stuck there. Yeah. <laughs> and then Sabrina wants to know, do you recommend blogging first or just go right into video? Well, if you already have a blog, then that's awesome, but you can just start with video. And now what I'm doing is I, I make the video, YouTube will transcribe the video for you automatically. So when you're in the back end of YouTube, you can go over to where it says subtitles and, and CC for closed captions. You can download the transcription, go over to your blog, paste it in, fix the formatting because YouTube doesn't know how to capitalize or use a period anywhere in there. So you gotta fix it so it looks good, embed the video in it, put in a couple more photos and links to other pages on your website, boom, you got a blog post that you made in about 20 minutes. I have, since I started doing video, um, I quickly realized like, I love blogging, like don't get me wrong, I'm one of the rare people that loves writing. However, you can quickly speak in video. And so essentially, if I create a five minute video, it can easily be like a 2000 word blog post. So what I started doing is I started doing the videos first. And then like Karen mentioned, I just transcribe it. Um, I use a service called Temi, it's T-E-M-I.com. It's 10 cents a minute. So if you're making like a five minute video, it's like, 50 cents to do it. Right. And it, it does do like the caption, like it, it'll do like capitalizations and all it's like, I don't know how they do it, but it's amazing. And then I just put that onto my blog post. So now what I, what I teach in the Academy is do the video. Once you have the video post it to YouTube and then basically just create a blog out of that video. And then don't forget to embed from YouTube right into your blog. And then that way, again, you're doubling your SEO efforts because people can find you on Google or they can find you on YouTube or both. So that's what I personally would recommend moving forward is start with the video and then turn it into a blog post. But if you already have a blog and you have posts created, go make videos of yeah. those blog posts. And now you've already got content. So you don't even have to think about it. You're basically just going to speak what's in that blog post in a more condensed version. You know, you don't want to just like read it verbatim, but you can make a five minute video out of that blog post or shorter with no trouble. Yeah. Love that. And then the last question, um, Laura asks, Karen, are you <laughs> working on YouTube class for realtors? Well, yes, Laura, thank you for asking. So <laughs> Laura used to work, well, I used to work for the same brokerage that Laura works for in Atlanta. So thank you for coming to this, Laura. And yes, I, after I started having the success, people started finding me and they would like Facebook me and, and text me and call me and say, what are you using for editing? And how do you do your keyword research? And I was spending hours on the phone every week telling people what I do because I, I love to share. Like if it's working for me, I want to tell everybody I know because if it's working, I want you to have success too. But then I realized like I'm not selling houses because I'm spending so much time on the phone. So I am making a YouTube for Realtors course. It's called YouTube for Agents and I am hopefully going to have it finished by the end of June. It's like 90% done. I'm just wrapping it all up and then I'm going to have about 10 modules where this one is how to film. This one is how to edit. This one is how to do keyword research. And, and they're going to go into all of the detail of exactly how to do it. Awesome. I love it. 
So I want to just thank everybody for coming out today. And we had a lot of people on this call. So I just want to say thank you. And I want to thank Karen also for sharing so many knowledge bombs. Like this call was unreal. I'm so, so thankful that you're be willing to come and share so much knowledge with us. And um, I also want to say that if you are interested in the Lead Strategy Academy, it's closed right now. We do talk about video in the, in the uh, academy. But if you want to jump on the wait list, you can go to that link and get on the wait list. And so then when it does open up, you will be able to join once that opportunity arises. And again, thank you so much, Karen. I really, really appreciate it. And I'm sure everybody else does too. Well, thank you for asking me. It sure was fun. I mean, as you can tell, I love talking about this. And so I just hope to encourage people that it's really not that hard. And if you can just get over that barrier of, ah, I'm afraid to be on camera. Yeah. Once you start doing it with any frequency and regularity, I mean, my business has exploded. Like I said, I was new to my market one year ago and I've got seven in contract right now. Golly. Oh my gosh. So that's just, again, it's unreal. I'm blown away. So thank you so much. And for anybody that's looking to get into our community, Karen is a group member in the community. I'm going to post the replay of this in our community. And then if you have questions for Karen, then go ahead and comment on this below and we'll be happy to, to help. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks again. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Erin. Bye everyone.